Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, Counterspell Hater here, back with another EDH guide. Uh, we're doing more throwback. Uh, this time starring the Gitrog monster, probably one of my favorites. Because uh, for three generic, a black and a green it is a legendary frog core with death touch and it's a 6-6. Six, six. At the beginning of your upkeep, you sacrifice it unless you sacrifice a land. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. <clears throat> and whenever one or more Land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere. Draw a card. So this deck is going to be utilizing uh, both of those abilities. In fact, all all lines of text. And uh, so we're going to be wanting to put land cards into our graveyard and also take advantage of, I guess, drawing those cards and also playing lands, like being able to play additional lands. <clears throat> so anyway, so let's get started with uh, Worm Harvest for two generic and triple hybrid black-green sorcery. Uh, put a 1-1 one, one black and green worm creature token into play for each land card in your graveyard. And then it has retrace, meaning you may play it from your graveyard by discarding land card in addition to paying its other costs. So when you cast this via use of retrace. You are also drawing yourself a card in, in addition to getting all those tokens. And, and we want, and since uh, we are discarding more and more lands in this thing, each time we cast it, uh, we'll be getting more, more and more worms. So pretty good card. Savage Conception, not too bad in case we need like a hefty blocker. Because for three generic and double green, it is a sorcery uh, that puts a 3-3 green uh, beast creature token into play under your control and has retraced. So if you need hefty blockers, there's your answer. Death Cloud, X and triple black uh, sorcery. Each player loses X life, discards X cards, sacrifices X creatures, then sacrifices X lands. So this can really draw you a lot of cards due to sacrificing lands and discarding cards. You will lose life and creatures. But thanks to like Worm Harvest and some of the, and some of the other cards we will see later on in this video, uh, that may not be a problem. The life, however, may be, but we have some other effects that can help us with that. And this affects everyone, so this is going to be more of a win for you and more of a big blow to your opponents. Uh, Octa, Born of Ash, two generic and double black for legendary spirit with haste through two at the beginning of your upkeep. If you have if you have more cards in your hand than each opponent, you may sacrifice a swamp and do to a strong card because get rock monster whenever we. Put a land into our whenever a land is put into our graveyard. So by the way, that is via that can be via discard, sacrifice, or mill, which is anyway general and possible, generally possible. Excuse me. Uh, anyways, you may sacrifice a swamp if you do return Octa Born of Ash from your graveyard to play. So this essentially could be like a an eternal blocker or attacker. Uh, whichever, whatever you need or whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, and as haste, so you're going to attack right as it comes out. So pretty nice. And this will also draw your cards because you're sacrificing a swamp. Now look, I know the quality of this picture isn't great, but it's fine. I'll read it to you. Gerard, Golgari, Lich Lord, double black, double green, legendary uh, zombie elf. He gets plus one, plus one for each creature card in your graveyard. So could potentially get big because you are milling cards and you can't control really. You can't really control what you mill unless you scry. Uh, two, two. And for one generic, a black and a green, you can sacrifice another creature and each opponent loses life equal to the sacrifice creature's power. The other line of text, however, sacrifice a swamp and a forest and return Gerard from your graveyard to your hand. So that draws you two cards and gets drawn back into your hand. So this guy could be, get big. He could uh, help like chip away at your opponents, and he will always come back as long as you're able to sacrifice a oh, swamp and a forest to him. Scourge familiar for four generic and black, 
is an imp with flying three two. Uh, you can discard a card to it to add a black mana to mana pool. So this could possibly be an infinite combo, um, in a sense, up to a point, because you just got a land card, you add a black mana, and then hopefully you're able to draw into other lands. <clears throat> but eventually you will come to a point where you will have discarded all your lands if you have like ran into if you have drawn into all of them and discarded all of them, you will run to a point where you aren't able to discard any lands anymore. So instead just have to discard cards. But still a nice card because this could get you a lot of mana. Sylvian Sylvan Safekeeper uh, for just a singular green it is a human wizard. One one sacrifice the land to it and then target creature you control gains shroud until in turn. Uh, it can't be the target of spells or abilities. So it's like hexproof, except you cannot interact with your own creatures, kind of as well. Uh, Nantuko Cultivator for three generic and a green it is an insect druid. Uh, two two. When it comes into play, you may discard any number of land cards from your hand. Put them in a plus one plus one on Nantuko Cultivator and draw that many cards. So this. So due to get rug and this effect, you'll essentially be drawing like double the normal non cards you would be with this card. And this can also come in as a pretty hefty blocker, depending on how many dis lands you discard to it. So pretty nice. God Eternal Bantu for three generic and double black. It is, he, I guess, is a legendary zombie god or it, I should say. Men with Menace, five, six, and one. When he enters the battlefield, uh, sacrifice any number of permanents, then draw them many cards. And if those are lands, you will also draw a card for each land you sacrifice uh, due to the Get Rock monster. If it's on your battlefield. And when God Eternal Bantu dies, or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put it, it into its owner's library, third from the top. So this is always guaranteed to like come back to you most of the time. And so then you can play it again, sacrifice a bunch of permits and draw a bunch of cards if need be. Uh, green Seeker, for a singular green, uh, she is an elf spell shaper, one, one. And for a green, you can discard a land, uh, you can discard a card and tap her to search your library for a basic land card, reveal it and put it into your hand. There's Shuffle your library. So after you search up your land, uh, you can also draw a card due, if you have the Get Rock Monster out. So this is like, gets you a land and a card. Uh, that could also be a land. So maybe find you something you need. World Shaper, for three generic and a green, he is a human, I mean, excuse me, Murpho Shaman. Don't know what I was thinking. 3-3, three, three. Uh, when it attacks, you may put the top three cards of, the li of your library into your graveyard. And whenever Wolf Shaper dies, you put all land cards from your graveyard onto the top of the tab. So then all those land cards you discarded, mill or sacrifice, suddenly are back on your battlefield when this guy dies, which could be a lot of trouble for your opponents. And then suddenly you have access to a whole bunch more mana when it comes around to you and you untap. Uh, Scape Chip for two generic and double green. You can sacrifice any number of lands to it. And then you search your library for up to that many land cards. Land cards, keyword uh, that is missing there is basic, meaning that those can be non-basic non land cards that you search up. So note that. Uh, put them onto the battlefield tabs that shuffle your library. So this means you could get a um, Dark Deaths. Yeah. Yeah, you could get a Dark Depths. You could get a, a Blighted Woodland. You could get a Grim Backwood. Uh, you could get like all, like any like non basic land or basic land from your deck, which is why this is so good. Anyways, and also then she'll be library, obviously. So, Zombie Infestation. So, like, uh, I don't know what this space. 
Uh, Scourge familiar. Uh, dummy infestation up to a point is infinite because you just because for one generic and a black it is enchantment that you can discard two cards to to put a two two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. Uh, so as long as you have the lands to discard to it, as long as you, you have I guess cards in general to discard to it. Uh, you can discard two to create a two two. Uh, however, if those if any of those happen to be land cards, Get Rog Monster is going to draw you uh, cards, which could possibly be more land cards that you can then discard the Tommy Infestation and over and over again. You get the idea. So, as long as you're able to like keep supplying yourself with cards up to like a point, you could have been, like up to a point, you could have infinite zombies. Uh, like, there would be a limit because then it. Because like you have to watch out for like decking yourself. Uh, because yeah, that is I will say I know that that is one of the, probably one of the greatest risks risks with this deck is decking yourself due to the card draw. Because like of how easy it is to get carried away sacrificing lands and then drawing cards and then suddenly you're like there's nothing left. Bears moving on fortitude for one generic and a green. Chain creature. When Fortitude is put into a graveyard from play, you return to its owner's hand, and then you can sacrifice a force to regenerate an enchanted creature. So the next time it would be destroyed, that enchanted creature is instead removed from combat and all damage is healed up. Um, Noose Constrictor, from one generic and a green, uh, is a snake with reach. You discard a card to it, and then it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Two two, so great blocker, kind of questionable. Not gonna lie, wizards. Uh, but we'll move on. Elvish reclaimer, green, just a singular green for an elf warrior. Uh, and it gets plus two plus two as long as there are three more land cards in your graveyard. And then for two generic, you can tap it and sacrifice the land. Search your library for a land card. Put it on the battlefield tapped. This shall be library. Uh. So this can power itself up and also draw you cards thanks to get rocking get you lands so in the process so essentially you don't really lose lands drown in filth uh for a black and a green you choose target creature you and you put the top four cards you library into your graveyard and then that creature gets minus one minus one until end of turn for each land card in your graveyard and that is going to be very beneficial to us this is a sorcery by the way so it can only be used on your turn and like I said time and time again, uh, the only way to like kill an indestructible creature is mostly through uh, minus X minus X effects. Uh, other than that, uh, you can exile it or else there's there's nothing you can do about it. Because if a creature has zero toughness, then it dies. And that goes for all creatures, including ones with an indestructible. Indestructible says that if any effects that say destroy or just like destroy, don't, and also damage cannot destroy it. Uh, so that's that. But if you give it like minus X, minus X effects, uh, it does count as it having zero toughness. And since it has zero toughness in this way, it dies. Anyways, moving on. Uh, for triple green, we have Iula's Influence Enchantments. Discard a land card to it to create a 2 2 bear, green bear creature token. So, like I said with the others, uh, Scourge Familiar, Zombie Infestation, uh, Infinite up to a point. Squandered Resources for black and a green is enchantment that you can sacrifice and land to to add to your mana pool one mana of any type the sacrifice land could produce. But this ability only as this, this ability has a mana source, whatever that's really supposed to mean, we'll ignore that because that probably doesn't matter. So what you could do is tap your land and then sacrifice it to squandered resources. That way you're essentially getting double mana and drawing yourself a card in the process. So this could actually end up getting you a lot of mana if you think about it and if you're able to play correctly. Then we have reprocess, which is a sorcerer for two generic and double black. That you can sacrifice any number of artifacts, creatures, and or lands 
uh, to it and draw a card for each one sacrifice this way. Uh, Dark Heart of the Wood, Black Green enchantment that you could sacrifice your force to to uh, give yourself three life. So that fixes kind of a, our life total problem from earlier with uh, Death Cloud. Scroll Wrangler uh, for two generic and double green. It is a human druid uh, that for one generic and a green, you can sacrifice a land to it to create two one one green scroll creature tokens. And for one generic and green, you can also sacrifice a land to it to give scroll creatures plus one plus one and so on. And this is on all sides of the board. So if your uh, opponents have, for whatever reason, have squirrels, they're going to get bumped up. And also, scroll regular is a 2 2. Nice way to create tokens and draw your card. Draw yourself cards in the process, like I said, and possibly even close out the game within a few turns. Grim Flare for a black and a green. He is a human warrior uh, tramp with trample to do. And whenever he deals combat damage to a player, you look at the top three cards of your library and you put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest back on top of your library in any order. So those you do not uh, put. Uh, into your graveyard. If you put lands into your graveyard, you may end up drawing those cards, which could be pretty nice. And delirium. So this creature gets plus two plus two as long as as there are four more cards typed among cards in your graveyard, which through all the mill on that, that could be possible. Phantasmagorgon for five generic and all black is a horror six six. And when you play Phantasmagorgon, any player may discard three cards. If a player does, counter Phantasmagorgon. However, you can discard three cards and return it from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, so this is a good way to will your opponent other resources, you know, chip them down slowly, chip down their plans if they don't want like a 6-6 six, six on your field. Uh, and you can also discard three cards to get this back from your graveyard to your hand unless someone just exiles it from your graveyard. Uh, and if you like discard lands to this, then obviously get Rock drawing you cards in the process. So this is beneficial for you in all ways and not so beneficial for your opponents because this is slowly, uh, this is like re majorly reduce, this can majorly reduce the amount of time they have to uh, shut you down. Uh, now again to like the non land. Uh, the non like sacrifice sort of synergy. So like uh, cards that utilize us playing lands or allow us to play lands from somewhere else, like the graveyard mostly, or allow us to like do something with lands. Uh, Crucible of Worlds, for instance, for three generic, it's an artifact that you may play that allows you to play lands from your graveyard. Titana, Protector of Argoth, uh, to go kind of go along with it for three generic and double green. She is a legendary elemental, 5-3, and when she enters the battlefield, you return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield. And whenever a land you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you create a 5-3 green elemental creature token. And due to us uh, having like a decent amount of cards that sacrifice lands, we'll probably be getting a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of elementals. There, I, there we go. Yeah. Oh, I know what's called section synergies. Excuse me. Uh, Lord of Extinction. Another synergy. Because with your generic, a black and a green is an elemental whose power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in all graveyards. Keyword all. Uh, so that means you, your opponents, uh, all graveyards are contributing to this thing's power and toughness. And since you're going to be putting a lot into your graveyard, because you're sacrificing lands, discarding them, milling them, and also along with other stuff, this is going to be huge when it enters in, most likely. Mesrek, Crawl, Death, Breeze. For three generic, a black and a green. He is a legendary insect shaman flying to two. And whenever a player sacrifices another permanent, so again, all sides, all boards, uh, put a plus of power on each creature you control. And due to a sacrificing a good, probably a good amount of lands, 
This is going to be bumping up a lot of our team a lot of times. It probably just helps us close out the game. Centaur Vine Crusher for three generic and a green. It is a plant centaur with trample 1-1. One, one. It gets an energy buffer with a number of plus and plus counters on it, equal to the number of land cards in all graveyards. So again, all size, all graveyards affect this. And whenever a land is put into a graveyard from anywhere, so that's, again, you and your, your opponents. So via discard, sacrifice, mill, whatever, you may pay double green. And if you do, you return Centaur Vine Crusher for your graveyard to your hand. So this is an eternal attacker and blocker. It can possibly just uh, help you close out the game due to its sheer size. Terra Bore for one generic and double green is a live drop. There's one. I have no idea. Trample. Uh, its power intelligence are each equal to known land cards in all graveyards. So again, all graveyards contribute to this. Herald of Lee Shrop for six generic and a black is an avatar with flying two four cumulative upkeep. You gain control of a land you don't control. So what that means is that at, at the beginning of your upkeep, you get an inch cap. So you just play this. It comes around to your next turn. It's your upkeep. So the uh, upkeep trigger goes off. So that means this gets an age counter. So then you have to pay the cost uh, that comes after the dash. So in this case, gain control of the land you don't control uh, for each age counter on that creature. So this guy is one age counter. We have to pay that cost one time. He, he has two, we have to pay it twice and so on and so forth. So he'll be giving us one more land string to lay enough. Usually these costs are uh, rather hefty for you as a player. However, Harold of Leash Rock gets plus one plus one for each land you control but don't own. And, I, and by the way, if you can't pay the cost, you have to sacrifice the creature. And when Harold of Leash Rock leaves play, each player gains control of each land he or she owns that you control. Uh, the reason this is in this deck is because it allows us to have land to sacrifice to give out. So before this goes, you could just sacrifice uh, all lands you control but don't own, so like all your opponent's lands, and like most of them, or at least try to. And then when he leaves play, it doesn't matter. It renders your opponent's mana less, or uh, having to rebuild. Ancient Green Warden, four generic and double green, is an elemental reach with reach uh, five seven. You may play land from your graveyard. Uh, if a land entered the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. And we do have some landfall stuff like Lotus Cobra. One generic in the green is a snake two one that states whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control. You may add one mana of and one color to your mana pool. So this is in here to help us like get mana going since we're sacrificing lands and like discarding them so that way we don't fall behind. And because of Ancient Green Warden, the mana will be doubled up if we have Ancient Green Warden and this creature out. So pretty nice in general. Skyclave Pickaxe, uh, it's for a green, it's an artifact equipment that when it's battlefield, it attaches itself to target creature control. And it's got a clip cost of two generic and a green, meaning you just regularly pay that cost and just attach it to a creature. You can only activate that as a sorcery, so only on your turn. And whenever it lands in the battlefield under your control, a quick creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn, and that could trigger off multiple times. So that could possibly uh, help you close out the game if you have it attached this attached to like something with tremble like uh Terravore or Centaur Vine Crusher, or just something with Tremble in general, or like Flying or some form of Evasion. Uh, Turn Timber Sower <coughs> for two generic and a green. Uh, he is an Elf Druid. 3-3. Uh, three, three. Whenever one or more land cards are put into, into your graveyard from anywhere, creates a, uh, a 01 Green Plant Creature Token, so Sacrifice Mill. Now this, now it's one, whenever one or more. So if you just mill like three lands, you're only, you're still only getting 101. 
So keep that in mind. It doesn't matter how many lands you like sacrifice for mill or discard, you're only getting one. So discard like individually. So like say you discard like a land, like a land card, like singularly. Instead of like discarding two, you get uh, one, oh one, uh, and then you discard another. That's another old one. Whereas just discarding two at once due to an effect would have you only getting an old one. Makes sense? Anyways, for a green, you can also sacrifice two creatures to return to our land. You target land from your graveyard to your hand. <clears throat> so in a sense, this can really uh, help you out. Uh, allows you to draw more cards. So actually, uh, if you play this alongside uh, Scourge Familiar and like, um, uh, or, and maybe like, oh, what's that legendary card that, that can, allows you to like change mana? Chromatic Ori, then that actually, I believe, could be potentially an infinite combo. Uh, Avenger Zendikar for five generic and double green uh, is an elemental that when there's a battlefield, it puts an 01 green plant creature token onto the battlefield for each land you control. It's a 5-5, five, five, and whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a plus of counter on each plant you control. Plant creatures you control, excuse me. <laughs> and due to our commander also being able to, to allow us to play an additional land each turn, that's going to be real nice. Uh, Omnixil is the Fallen, a 3 generic and double black. He is a legendary demon with landfall 3 3. And whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, may have target player lose through life and if you do put three plus powers on omnix list for fallen so and since you're able to do this like at least twice thanks to your commander uh that could be someone losing six life and omnix list getting six counters like a turn uh and if you're able to like play more then someone's going to be probably in trouble it's most likely more than not, you're going to be taking the opportunity to drain your opponent's life and make on the list bigger. Cross and restore for two generic and a green. It's a druid one two that can tap to untap target lands. Threshold, however, you can tap it and untap up to three target lands, but you can only use that ability if some more cards are in your graveyard. And most likely they will be. Uh, course or crew fix for one generic and double green. Is an enchantment centaur, uh, enchantment creature centaur. Uh, you play with the top card of your library revealed, meaning that your opponent will unfortunately, your opponent, excuse me, or opponent will unfortunately know like what you're playing, what you're playing next. Uh, you may play the top card of your library if it's a land card, so long as you play lands on the top of your deck if you don't have them in your hand. And whenever a land is about field under your control, you gain one life, two, four. <clears throat> Uh, so it can fix like can fix you up real quick. Uh, fast spawn. I didn't really even think this would be a card due to how powerful it is, but apparently it is. Because for a singular green, it's an enchantment that states you may play any number of lands on each of your turns, and whenever you play a land, if it isn't the first land you played this turn. Fast Mon, however, deals one damage to you. Uh, because of course you're a crew fix, that's no problem. Anyways, now we get into our uh, non basic lands. Lake of the Dead. If Lake of the Dead would enter the battlefield, sacrifice a swamp instead. If you do, you put Lake of the Dead onto the battlefield. If you don't, put it into its owner's graveyard. So I guess sacrifice, in other words, uh, tap it. To add a black, or you can tap it to sacrifice your swamp and add quadruple black to your mana pool, which would also draw you a card thanks to the Get Rock Monster. Dust Bowl, it can tap to add a color. So for three generic, it can tap and sacrifice a land, or and you have to sacrifice the land, excuse me. Uh, and then you can destroy target non basic land. 
Uh, so it could be like a uh, uh, a uh, shrine, uh, Nykthos shrine to Nyx, I think it is, or like a uh, Phyrexian tower, uh, Volrath stronghold, Nurgorg, or Cabal coffers, which would be even better. Uh, so, crystals are yours. Drown Yard Temple, it's a land that can tap to add a colors or for three generic. Uh, you return it from your graveyard to the battlefield, tapped. So, this comes back. Lotus Field, Hexproof, it enters the battlefield, tapped. And whenever it, it enters the battlefield, uh, sacrifice two lands. Uh, and then it can tap to also add three mana of any one color. So, Hexproof. It's like a bit better because you can interact with uh, your opponent that which has hexproof, but your opponents cannot. There still is like uh, your opponent's creatures like being able to interact with like uh, your opponents with hexproof. If your opponent with hexproof happens to be a creature and it can be dealt damage. But anyways, uh, enough of that confusion. Field of Ruin, you can tap to add a color spell for two generic, you can tap it and sacrifice it to destroy target non-basic land and important controls. And then each player searches their library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, uh, and then shuffle to their library. And it doesn't come in tapped, so pretty nice. Gargoyle Castle, uh, it's a land that can tap for a color spell for five generic. You can tap it and sacrifice Gargoyle Castle uh, and put a three for colors gargoyle artifact creature token with flying onto the battlefield. Uh, so, and since you are able to play land cards from your graveyard with like some of the cards in this deck, uh, that can be like, in a sense, infinite, like three fourths, like a three four turn, probably at the most. Strip mine, it's a land that can tap for a colors or it can tap and sacrifice itself to destroy target land of your choosing. Cryptic Cave, uh, it's a land that can tap for colors or for one generic, you can tap and sacrifice itself to draw you a card. But you can only activate that ability to control five or more lands. Myriad Landscape, after that, you tabs and it can tap for a colors or for two generic, you can tap, sacrifice itself to allow you to search your library for up to two. Uh, basic land cards that share a land type. Put them on the battlefield tabs and show for your library. Involving mods can tap to sacrifice itself to search your library for, to allow you to search your library for your basic land card and put it on the battlefield tabs and show for your library. Uh, Blighted Woodland, it can tap to add a color to your mana pool or for three generic and a green, it can tap to sacrifice itself to allow you to search your library for two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield tabs. Uh, then shuffle your library. Blind it then. It's a land that can tap for colors or for four generic and black. It can tap itself and sacrifice itself. And then a uh, target opponent of your choosing sacrifices a creature. Spawning bed. Uh, it's a land that can tap for colors or for six generic. You can tap it and sacrifice it uh, to put three, one, one. Colors, Eldrazi, Scion, creature tokens onto the battlefield, and they have sacrifice this creature, add uh, one colors, manage your mana pool. God's Eye, Gates of the Rakai, uh, Legendary Land, it can tap for a colors, or, well, actually, no, or it just can tap for a colors, but when it's put into a graveyard from play, put a 1-1 uh, one, one colors, spirit, creature token into play. I think this would be more powerful if it's named God's Eye, Gates of the Rakai. I mean, come on. Warped Landscape, uh, it can tap for a colorless or for two generic. It can tap and sacrifice itself to allow you to search for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield tap, then show for your library. <clears throat> Dunes of the Dead, it's a land, it's a land desert that can tap itself to add a colorless to your mana pool. And when it is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you create a 2 2 black song creature token. Crystal Vein, you can tap to add the colors, or you can tap and sacrifice itself to add two colors to your mana pool. <coughs> Scoundrel Barons, it's a land that uh, if it would enter the battlefield and said you sacrifice two untapped lands, 
Instead, if you do put it on Spaffit, if you don't put it into its owner's graveyard, uh, and if you do end up getting this onto your battlefield, it's a land that can tap for quadruple colorless. Fabled Passage uh, is a land that can tap to sacrifice itself and allow you to search your library for a basic land card and put that card on the battlefield tapped and then search, shuffle your library, excuse me. Then if you have, and then if you control four more lands, uh, you untap that land. And then we have our 20 basic forests and our 20 basic swamps. And with that, the end of this video showing the Girog monster. And I hope you guys uh, like this EDH video. Uh, and I hope you guys uh, keep the view count going up on some of the videos and the su subscriber count going up. And, I'll, and also the commenter who I've been uh, responding to and also I guess just to everyone else whoever comments on this video first can decide uh, what commander I may do next um, in a future video so get to the comment section guys anyways uh, like and subscribe um, obviously we're only at 14 subscribers guys keep it going like six more and then we're up to 20 you can do a 20 sub then 20 sub special excuse me uh don't forget to also like i said comment uh hit the notification bell that way you don't miss more of this content share this video along with other videos i've already done that you may have not watched which if you haven't go watch them and then share them with uh others you may know of <clears throat> anyways that is it. Uh, I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.